one and we are live i'm so excited Lori wilson how are you hey, i'm wet it's raining here in west virginia but it's good it's yeah you're getting a lot of that wet. same weather we are we're in uh we're i'm i'm not too far away from you i'm in southwest ohio so cincinnati dayton area oh so whatever weather you have you're sending it my way right and, and just so you know there's more to come <laughs> awesome awesome well, I'm glad you made it. Uh, how did your closing go? Oh, smooth as it could be. Smooth, smooth. sailing for a rainy day in, in uh, West Virginia, huh? Yep. yep, it was awesome. And it's so wonderful. I show up to a closing and uh, of course the other agent from the other company has a nice big thick folder with all these documents inside. And, and I just say, hey, it's just me. Oh, you got your phone, it. right? <laughs> Yes, That's that. hilarious. It's great. Well, listen, I'm so glad you um, I'm so glad you volunteered to come on and share your story. Um, you know, I use this podcast um, and this Facebook Live kind of as a platform for agents to come on and just talk about their transition over to EXP Realty. And certainly, I think you have a great story to tell. I'm I'm really excited. Um, I picked up your story actually on an article. Um, Gosh, I'm, I'm not sure who even shared it, but it, it I think that the title of the article was from beauty queen to real estate queen. And I was certainly intrigued when I read that. I started to dig into it a little bit and I had to reach out to you to try to get you on the show. So um, why don't we just why don't we start off by talking about that? That's kind of the elephant in the room. Right. So talk about this whole beauty queen thing. Oh, my. Well, it was another lifetime ago. Um, it was forever ago. Uh, you know, I, I guess that I should give my parents some credit here because I grew up extremely painfully shy. Um, I knew all who all the kids were in school based on their shoes because I walked through the hallways with my head down and um, my parents said, OK, we can't let this keep going. So they put me in modeling classes. And then from there, I met someone who introduced me to pageants and you know, a lot of people think that pageants have a stigma that comes along with it um, that you see on TV and, and it's and it's uh, all about beauty and that's it. And the one thing I can say for me and my experience with pageants is that it forced me to learn to speak to people face to face and in a group. It forced me to examine my beliefs and thoughts about what's going on in the world locally and globally. So I had to become informed about the news um, again, globally and locally. And it also forced me to uh, it's almost like a self-examination. You know, is this the way I want to be as a, as a human, as a person? So while yes, a lot of people do use it as a platform to go into careers, uh, you know, with acting and modeling and things like that, there are also uh, women who use it as a platform to build a career. And I have to say that if I would have never done that, I would not be doing what I'm doing now. Uh, yeah. I would have never been able to sit here and do this with you ever, ever. Um, so it, it, it was a wonderful experience. Um, it back in the eighties when we used to have big hair and <laughs> hairspray and, and all that. Um, but it was good. It was a great experience and it taught me a lot about how to carry myself and how to speak and how to think on my feet and, of course, then I didn't know, but it really prepared me for doing what I do now with real estate. And um, and, and it started it created just a great foundation for me. Yeah, that's great. I, I bet. I mean, with with all of the experience you gain from that, it sounds like most of it does actually translate well into real estate. So I'm sure um, not only did it serve you then, but it's serving you now in uh, in the next chapter of your life. So. You know, let's talk about that a little bit. Obviously, you know, you've been in real estate, as I remember, I mean, eight short years, right? But you've come um, quite a ways. And, and so what do you attribute your success to? Mostly it's, uh, for me, it's always been goal setting. Uh, so when I started uh, with real estate, I did it because I saw that at very quickly, the youngest child, uh, I have three kids, the youngest one was getting to an age where she does, you know, kids get to be a certain age where they don't want to be seen with you. They don't want to talk to you in public. And I wasn't the cool mom. I wasn't the cool thing anymore. So I told my husband, I said, very shortly, 
I am going to need something to do because I, you can only, you know, clean the kitchen so many times a day, <laughs> clean the toilet so many times a day. And, and I, my brain just can't do that. I can't every day, all day. So, and God bless the people who can. And, and I think it's wonderful, but for me personally, I needed more. So got my real estate license and my plan was if in five years, I always do a five year plan. If in five mm -hmm. years, I wasn't able or wouldn't be able to sustain myself, make a living, then I was going to go to nursing school. That was my plan. And okay. so I gave myself five years. And again, it's funny because the pageant world jumped into giving me some experience with how to learn to promote myself as a realtor. Because at the time I owned a franchise which uh, was Mrs. West Virginia, America. And I grew that little pageant from you typically having three participants to having 20. And so because I had that franchise, I learned very quickly uh, how to utilize the cheapest and free ways to <laughs> market myself because I had no money. And so then when I got my real estate license, a lot of those things I learned, I applied it to real estate. And once I got that first closing, which is, was a $65,000 house. Okay. I will never forget it. $65,000 house. And once I closed that, I, it, the bug had me and there was just not, nothing was going to stop me. So I set goal after goal, after goal, after goal. And I never pay attention to what other people are doing. I set my goals per quarter and what, and it's personal. I keep it to myself. It's just for me. And I set my goals per quarter, put my blinders on and move forward. I don't worry about what other people are doing. So let's, I, let's talk about that real quick. Cause I, I know that, you know, that, that, by the way, in, in my opinion is, is kind of a sickness. Um, it is, you know, I think what happens when you start comparing yourself to others is you start living out other people's dreams and aspirations for, you know, for yourself. And it's it's kind of a weird thing to do, but, you know, it's easy to get caught up in because that's what society, society tells us, right, we should always want more and more and more and more. Even if we're happy in our, in our current role or current state, we right. should always want more, right? But for you, you set goals right out of the gate, and one of you, one of the one of the golden rules for your success has been not to compare to yourself to others. Where, how did you know to do that, though? I'm curious. I guess I've just never really cared what other people thought or what other people did. I've never done anything the way everybody else does. Okay. And for example, in our area, there is a print magazine where. Uh, every Sunday in the Sunday newspaper, every uh, most agents advertise in this print magazine. And I always thought that was so silly. You know, why? I'm already competing against all these people. Why would I put everything in this magazine and continue to compete against them when I can do something completely different to separate myself to get the attention that I need? Because, you know, when if a buyer is looking at something in print, which you and I know does not happen very often. No. If they are on a Sunday morning going through this magazine, is my picture or my listing really going to create a sale? Probably not. Statistically, it's not going to happen that way. So um, I've never done what everybody else does. I've, if, if there's 200 people advertising in a print magazine, mm, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do this. And I purposefully... When I set my goals, I have purposefully thought out what am I going to do to to differentiate myself from everyone else. Yeah. And it's and like I said, I don't pay attention to what other people are doing, meaning I don't allow myself to compete against them. So um, I don't care if someone in another company sells 20 million in volume. That's mm -hmm. great. That's wonderful. But if I continually worry about competing against that person, then I completely lose focus on my business and my clients. And that's my responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So what are you like, what's, what's working for you in your business right now? What are some of the things that you're doing that are actually paying dividends? I'm shifting things at the moment because 
I came to EXP at the end of September. Mm -hmm. And I, at the end of every year, I look back on what I've done that was, that worked and what didn't work. And right now I am shifting a lot of what I was doing before into something different. I'm trying some different things that um, I had not done before. The other thing is too, is that I'm not afraid to try anything. Mm -hmm. You know, so what if it doesn't work? It's kind of like, you know, my hair about six or seven years ago, I cut my hair to about tall. And a lot of people said, Oh my gosh, I can't believe you did that. Well, it's just hair. It'll grow back. So with my business, you know, I'll research some, something and if it looks interesting and I think if it will differentiate me against what everyone else is, seems to be doing in my market, I'll try it. Why not? Yeah. I mean, what do you have to lose? Um, so right now I'm trying a lot of different things. Uh, I, I'm go getting a little bit away from uh, the realtor.com zip code leads. Sure. Getting away from that and leaning more toward things like home light op city. Um, just because, and even bold leads, bold leads is pretty good for me too. Okay. Uh, it's been really, it's been pretty successful and, and I only do that for listings. I don't do it for buyers because as I get busier with my career or my career grows and my business grows, of course, I think a lot, a lot of realtors like to list rather than buy, you know, work with buyers. Sure. But I love both. I love, absolutely love both. One of my favorite, favorite closings that I've had this year has been with a sweet, sweet couple that, they bought a house for $70,000 in Ohio and it, it took every penny they had. It was like this all American, beautiful story. They were 24 and 25 years old. And when we would look at property, they would show up in matching death leopard t-shirts every time. It was, just, <laughs> it was just awesome when we closed on their house. And um, so anyway, I mean, it's, Right now, that's what I'm starting to do. I'm starting to get away from the typical zip codes. And um, the other thing I'm doing is a little bit more toward uh, community activities. So I've always sponsored things like soccer teams and basketball teams and local things like that. But I'm starting to do more service-oriented things. For example, both of my boys are police officers. So... Uh, try to once a year serve uh, the police officers that they um, work for. So I'll make sure that maybe one Saturday there are pizzas there at the police department. Um, but we also last year um, served food at the um, local um, uh, charity here for the Senior Citizen Center. So we served about 100 people. And Man, that's awesome. So yeah. you're you're really you're niching in right now to the community, which is which is great, by the way, because um, all that's costing you is time, right? I mean, you you could go out and pay for Realtor.com or Zillow leads; um, they're going to cost you a lot of money. Uh, but in reality, what you're doing right now is is you're 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 building relationships that will serve you not only now but uh, far into the future without having to pay for expensive leads, right? And so you're you're hedging your bets on the future. Right. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, and the thing about it is that it's, it, you know, this business in my opinion is relationship based. So if I'm standing face to face in front of a potential client or somebody who may never even use me to list or sell property, it, it gives me the opportunity for them to meet me and hopefully like me. And then, if they hear down the road a friend or a family member that needs representation, they'll say, hey, who was that lady that did the senior citizens thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, but but it also is it's, it's a feel-good thing to do. You know, I grew up here, and it, I feel like I'm at a, at a time in my life where I need to start giving back. You know, I went to... Yeah. Barbersville Elementary. I walked to school my entire life. I went to Barbersville Elementary School, Barbersville Junior High, and Barbersville High School. And my education served me well. My community served me well. And so I feel like I'm in a position now to start giving back a little bit. 
That's great, man. I love to hear stories like that. I, I, I love the fact that, you know, probably everybody in that community on some level has to know you already. So you're, what you're doing is you're leveraging that, um, that you're leveraging that reputation that you've built in the community into a career in real estate and then using um, that career in real estate, that vehicle, that uh, those resources that real estate can generate from you to then give back into the community. I just love that. I, and I, I think that that's the way a business should be run. I really do. I, I believe that. So where were you? I, and I don't know the answer to this. Um, where were you before you came to eXp? I had, I started at a large national company when I first got my license and I was okay. with that company for two and a half years and switched to a smaller local brokerage and was there for five, almost six years. And uh, my husband kept saying, you need to get your broker's license. You need to get your broker's license. And I really had no intentions of being a broker. I didn't really had no desire to be in charge of other people and be responsible for other people. Yeah. I was doing just fine with listing and selling, making a good living. I only had to be responsible for me and my assistant. That was it. And, um, but I did get my broker's license. The reason behind that was because the more I thought about it, the more I thought, you know, what if my broker decides he doesn't want to stay here? Or what if my broker decides he wants to make a career change? So do I really want to have to pick and choose, you know, where do I want to go now? And I didn't want to be in that position. So I got my broker's license thinking that if I needed to needed it, I could just keep it in my back pocket. Mm -hmm. But once I got my broker's license, all of a sudden I started getting phone calls from different franchises in different places and wanting to wanting me to open it up and I really didn't want to open a franchise I mean I was already paying fees where I was and I didn't have to have I, again I didn't have to be responsible for anybody so really financially did not behoove me to take go from being you know a real estate agent to being a broker and not really making that much more money right. or really money because you know, when you're in a franchise, you have to recruit agents that produce to pay your bills. Right. You could actually, you could end up making less money. In fact, they, yes. they, they the word broke is in broker and that that's not by mistake. Good point. It's true. It's very true. And, and I, so it, that, that, that just did not appeal to me at all. And so then I started entertaining the thought of, well, maybe I could just, be by myself because there was a, a beauty to opening up a brokerage. It just being me, there are a few people in our area that do that. And um, because then I thought, well, I could do this out of my house. I wouldn't have to pay anybody's fees. I would, I, I could make more money, but I, the things that were in my head that I knew I wanted to see my business grow into. Yeah. He was already doing. And uh, as one human, one person, I knew I could not do things the way EXP was doing them and, and on the scale that they were doing them. And I knew that the franchises were never going to be able to do what EXP does and offers. Yeah. They're just, there's just no, there was just no competition. So it just made sense. And what you know, it was so cool because I remember being at EXP Con. I actually just remembered this. It just popped into my head. And I remember, if I remember correctly, don't make me look like a fool here, but I think West Virginia was the last mm -hmm. state to join EXP. And so that kind of completed the, 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 the puzzle that, um, you know, because we had, I think we had two Canadian provinces. We literally had every other state except West Virginia. And I remember um, them making that announcement on stage. Were you there? Were you a part of that? Was yeah, I. It's funny because um, now I make a joke that you know West Virginia is last in a lot of things, and this is probably the best last thing that <laughs> West Virginia's been. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was there, and I really and the XP Con uh, it came along right after uh, we opened up, right after I joined, and so I really had not made plans to go because I had already made plans to go to the NAR conference in Boston 
And then, and also our state convention was just right, right at the end of September. So I kept in my head, I kept thinking uh, with my business, I can't be gone three, you know, boom, boom, boom. I just can't right. away. And so I didn't, I didn't, I just kept thinking, no, I can't go. I can't go. I can't go. And finally they said, you really, 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 we really, 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 really want you to come because we're going to make this big announcement. So I went and they had all the other broker states on stage and then they announced West Virginia and I had to come from backstage and they had a microphone on me and I just kept telling them, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. I'm not saying anything. So they announced West Virginia and I came on stage and, uh, and that was that, but yeah, it's well, been you don't mind. Tell, like talk about how the, all that came about because obviously there's a story behind that, right? I mean, you were you were kind of you know you were trucking along, you're running a very successful business. Um, you were you know you had ideas that maybe in the future you might do your own thing, but you know you're you're you, you're living a good life, you're selling a lot of real estate, and and then you find out about EXP how. Um, the Kentucky broker reached out to me, Stephanie Gills, and she she reached out to me and asked me if we could talk and I said sure we can talk whatever <laughs> yeah. and um, we spoke on the phone for about 30 minutes and we after the phone call I called my husband and I said hmm this is pretty interesting this is different this is not a franchise and it sounds pretty interesting it's it, it just I like the business model and I liked the ability that other agents have to work online. Like, you know, like you were saying, I just went to a closing and I didn't have to have anything except my phone. That's all I needed. Um, but I've noticed that since I've been a part of EXP, the way things are set up, for example, Skyslope, I'm a checklist mm -hmm. person. So Skyslope is just my favorite thing in the whole wide world. And with my assistant, we had with the other company I was with, we had checklists, but it was on paper because they do, they did everything on paper there. And so, um, with sky slope, it just, it just made sense, but it makes, it makes me a more efficient and proficient agent. It, it forces me to even be better at what I do. And it makes me better for my clients. Um, sure. so, you know how, People say you need to take care of yourself first and then you can be, then you're good for your family and your kids. Sure. It's, to me, it's the same thing. You know, you take care of those, those little checklists, make sure they're good and they're in line and then it allows you to be better for your clients. Yep. I couldn't agree more. So, okay. So this the Kentucky broker reaches out to you and you guys, um, she presents the idea and and you go to your husband and you say, hey, this idea, it, it's uh, it's intriguing. Right. And and so what, what kind of did you wrestle with the decision? Was it hard to make? Did it take you very long? Talk about like talk about the process you went through to actually make the decision to come over. So we spoke on the phone once, uh, like I said, for about 30 minutes. And of course, and my husband is um, he's a physician. He's a surgeon. And he also had his MBA. So having his MBA, uh, he had a lot of business questions. And so we sat down together and we researched EXP. And of course, now looking back on it, I see all of the crazy things we found online about EXP and all the misconceptions. And so it, it was a little scary. But you know, anytime anyone moves from one company to another, no matter what you do for a living, when you change jobs, it's a scary thing. Sure. And so, and, and the thing is with us, with real estate is we have to really get our ducks in a row because we have clients, we have listings, we have buyers. And so it takes a little bit of footwork first before you can actually make that jump. And so my husband and I researched a little bit and then I spoke to Stephanie on the phone again and went home, discussed with my husband again. My husband called Stephanie and talked to her. Uh, it was probably a month of talking back and forth, discussing, lamenting, anxiety. And uh, when it finally, and I even talked a lot to my assistant 
And at the time I had a buyer's agent also. And, you know, I told them this is this is what I'm thinking about doing. Mm -hmm. And I talked to a friend who is a realtor with another company who was a broker, had his own company. And for about two or three years, the companies with bought him out. And so I called him one night about 10 o'clock and I said, you know, this is what I'm thinking about doing. And he just about had me talk out of it. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Yeah, he did. He said, you know, this is, it's tough. It's tough to be a broker and manage people and market your business personally and market your company. And th there's so many balls in the air. And he said, if you think you have a thousand balls in the air now, he said, if you open up your own company, you can add another, you know, 5,000 balls to that in the air because it's just, it's harder. You have to separate. So he just about had me talked out of it. I talked to Stephanie one more time and, and then I thought there's just, I'm silly. If I don't do this, somebody else will. And then I'll kick myself in the pants. Yeah. And uh, again, I knew that if I did my own thing or even went with a franchise, which I really didn't want to do, that uh, there's just no way I could reproduce or do do what EXP is doing. There's, uh, there's just no way. I would be re trying to reinvent the wheel very poorly. Yeah, yeah. So talk. To, let's talk about that piece because we, we, you and I both keep saying, you know, um, what EXP can offer. What, what in particular? What do you think that they offer that? um stood out to you what what really impacted you because obviously there's there's so many different reasons why an agent would join exp i mean there's revenue share there's you know there's there's stock there's um technology there's just so many different things but what what really impacted you what stood out to you for me it, it was the whole package but i think more than anything um it was the the technology than than anything else because i can you know if you if, if you do anything in real estate and you and if you read in the news or realtor magazine you know that at some level our business is going to be more of a online business than it is now you know they talk about i buyers they're they're i can't remember there's a i read an article about someone out west that was wanting to make real estate uh, seamless and almost cost uh, buyers and sellers nothing to be able to buy a house, you know, yeah. and I thought, well, how in the world is that going to happen? And I, I see EXP moving in the direction technology wise that in the same flow that maybe like Amazon has talked about getting into real estate, sure. or, you know, and so, and I, there was, there's no one in my area that's even remotely thinking about that. And, and I thought, you know, this is one of those things where you either, you've got to jump on the ship because if you don't, you're going to be left behind. Yeah. And when I was at EXP con, uh, I was talking to the agent in North Carolina that developed the show me app that mm -hmm. um, that EXP now owns. And uh, because I wanted to, that's one of the things I wanted to do was develop my own app. And uh, there's no way I could have done that. So um, we were backstage and I said to him, being at EXP Con was the, one of the smartest things I did. I'm really glad I came because things started making sense. I mean, you have to realize I was two weeks old three weeks old when I got to EXP con. So sure. um, it, it answered a lot of still unanswered questions for me. And when I was backstage talking to him, I said, you know, I think this must be what it felt like when Apple started or when Amazon started, there's so much excitement and there's so much opportunity and there's so much moving forward. It's, it gave me chills. So for me, I think it was the technology that really won me over. You know, the awesome. revenue share and the stock, that was icing on the cake. That's nice and that's wonderful. Um, so the technology was the first thing. And then the second thing was the the structure for commission split. You know, yeah. it just it just it was just it made so much sense for me to to switch. 
Yeah, and it, it is, you know, it, I, I ask everyone that question and everybody's answer, I think, is a little bit different. But that's what's cool about being a part of this. You know what I mean? I, I also feel like, you know, we're we're a startup, uh, although we're at 15,000 agents. Uh, I can only imagine what it was like when agents, you know, were getting on board, you know, three, four five, um, seven years ago. Right. I mean, we talk about like the Brent Goves of the world. These guys have like you know, thousands of people in their EXP family tree. And uh, it's just so exciting to be able to um, to mastermind and, and talk with those individuals uh, at a level I never could have before. And, and one of the big things for me now that we didn't expect, uh, Lori, was the community that we share now uh, as a brokerage. And um, I think that was a bit of a surprise to me, but now being able to connect with people like you and uh, and hear your story and, and other agents all across the United States has just been really special for me. And it, it was interesting at EXPCon when Glenn spoke about, he was on stage and he was kind of joking, but he was explaining how in the beginning they started out with just enough agents that filled the hotel room. <laughs> and then he said, then we grew and uh, they had the virtual world and he said 25 or 30 people would get on the virtual world and it would crash. And then he said it grew and then maybe 110 people would be on it and it would crash. And he said, and now look at it. And he said, yeah, people look at this and think that's weird. That's weird. That's odd. And he said, but do you think, are they talking about normal people or normal things? No, they aren't. They're talking about us because we're different. And maybe that's why, I feel like I fit in so well, like you said, the community, because I've never done anything everybody else wants to do. Like I said, you know, why would I advertise in a magazine with 200 other real estate agents? That just, yeah. just blind mode, blows my mind, you know? I love I, it. I love it. I love that that's your mindset. What do you, what do you think agents think that, I mean, I, I, I the, the word is out obviously, right? I mean, people know that, you know, currently like a hundred agents a week are joining EXP. And I know agents at these other brokerages and even these independent local brokerages have to be looking at EXP and, and, um, and they have to be curious about it. They have to wonder what's going on. I, I, I can't imagine that um, they wouldn't at least want to find out more about it. How is it being received in your marketplace? Well, um, it, uh, with a lot of trepidation and, there are there are other agents. I have three agents that are coming on board um, at the end of the month. So congratulations. Thank you. And so we're growing slowly, which is just fine with me because I am happy with having a good quality real estate agent in my brokerage. Um, and, and now, if somebody sells twenty six million a year and they're a great agent, Come on board. If they sell 26 million in volume a year and they drop the ball and they have a lot of complaints and they've, you know, been in front of the real estate commission or professional standards, I'm not really sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I'm very protective over the image of the brokerage here. And so I have to tell you, when Stephanie called me, I had never heard of EXP ever. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that there are too many other people in my area that did either. So I think right now people are kind of stepping back and they're leaning back and they're waiting and they're watching is what they're doing. Now yeah. there are parts of our state that are closer to more metropolitan areas like the Eastern Panhandle is up close to Washington, DC. The Northern Panhandle is up closer to Pittsburgh. So they're around bigger cities that, uh, they may have already heard of EXP before, so it may not be brand new news to them, but here it is. And, and we're small. Our, my board only has 250 agents, something like that. Our whole state only is less than 3,000 3, agents, our whole state. Wow. So wow. Yeah, it's small. It's small. So I go to state convention and I know half of the people there because yeah. the same people, well, it's probably like everything, you know, it's the same people that volunteer over and over and over and over again. You know, I serve on the board of directors for the state, I serve on the board of directors for my local board. And so I also have to respect their position. I have to respect them that you know, I have to work with them and, and I have to respect them and, and 
uh, but I people are starting to ask me questions here and there. So tell me about this. What's this virtual world? They're more interested about that than anything else. Yeah, EXP world. Sure. No, that's that is awesome. And and honestly, I think that you wouldn't want to grow any other way. I mean, for you, um, you know, you're you're getting in, or you got in at the right time, right? I mean, we are still a very young company, although we've been in business since 2009. Um, but there's so much opportunity. And that's why I, I, I that's one of the reasons, one, that one of the foundational principles of why I put on this show is because, you know, it allows for, you know, somebody like you to come on here, share your story, and then, you know, other agents and brokers to connect directly with your story, not only in West Virginia, but potentially even around the globe. And, yeah. and so, you know, because I, I know that there are agents across the United States right now that are running a business like you uh, in your exact position. And, you know, they're considering making a change or they're curious about finding out a little bit more. So I'm curious, what do you say to agents uh, if they approach you about eXp? What's your conversation sound like? Well, you have to know too that where the company I was at before, I had I had no intentions of ever leaving there. I was very happy there. Still, still am crazy about the broker there. Loved where I was. Loved every single bit about it. Um, so I really did not have any intentions of leaving. Like I told you before, even when I, after I got my broker's license. So I do tell agents that talk to me whether they're ready to leave or not leave they may not be ready to leave now but at some point in their career they may start thinking there's got to be more to this than what i'm doing so i think that what separates us and i tell agents this so what separates exp from other places is that we are running our business as a ceo uh, you know, I, my real estate business, I'm the CEO of that business. Mm -hmm. And I think that, and I tell the other agents that aren't here, EXP is, is purposefully doing things to put the power back in our hands of having the information. So yep. things like the show me app, uh, you know, the, the purchasing Virabella, you know, things like that, they are, giving us that power. So you're because realtor.com and Zillow, they're, they're never going to go away ever. They're not going to go away. So you can't, the other brokerages aren't, I don't see them doing anything to compete against that even mm -hmm. like they're just sitting back and accepting it. And, and EXP doesn't seem to be doing that. EXP is doing things to put, to give us a little bit more power so that we are the knowledge base. We're the source of the source of information. So right. when I tell agents that they start to think about it in a different way. And the other thing is too, is I tell them if you're part of a franchise, you realize your broker is counting on you to sell so much per month to pay his bills. Sure. And EXP, it's not like that. So, um, it, it, and as an agent, I know I didn't think about things like that before. So I try to talk to them and remind them what it's like, where they are and where it is now. And then the other thing I tell them is at your next closing, do the math. And yeah. usually that's it. Yeah. So I'm curious. Uh, uh, so for, for, for a, a gal that's, that's very goal oriented, right. And she is, you know, you're focused and, and, and I think that's why you've had success early on. What is your, what is your vision for the next five years with this? Um, I, my goal is really very simple and it's, it isn't, I don't know. It's not, it's just the simplest thing is that I want the West Virginia brokerage to be known as being efficient, knowledgeable, and represent our clients better than anybody else. So education, education, education in my book. Um, I want to see our brokerage grow and get bigger, of course, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, but I want it to also be done in a smart way. 
And I want our brokerage and our company to have the reputation of being the place to go to if you want to list, if you want to sell, and if you want to be a real estate agent. Um, you know, even Glenn mentioned at the EXP con, uh, I, the exact words aren't in my head right now, but part of it was that he wanted to make sure that our value as realtors is so good, is so great that it would be irresponsible to hang your license anywhere else. Yeah. And I love that. I love that. And I thought, man, that is uh, <laughs> pretty. Uh, it's a gutsy. bold statement, right? Yeah, it really is. And I, and, and I took that and I brought it back with me and I thought, you know, I feel the same way. I mean, really and truly, you really want to hang your license at that company. Look at what we're doing. So my five year goal is to to grow and and be have the best reputation in the state uh, and and just do a good job. And I think that sounds kind of, I guess, vague, but. Um, you know, I, I'm also new to being a broker too. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, setting, setting a, a goal for, for the state, uh, is, uh, a task for sure, but it'll happen. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Well, listen, Miss Lori Wilson, I have so enjoyed my time with you. Um, I am, I'm excited that, you know, um, we're in this together and uh, I, I'm grateful that you came on to share your story today. Let me ask you this, um, for those folks that are watching or listening to this, how can folks connect with you if they wanna find out more about EXP or if they just wanna find out more about how to grow a successful business? Mm -hmm. Well, I have a business page on Facebook and I have a business page on uh, Instagram and on LinkedIn, I'm on all the social media. If you just type in my name, if on any of those social media outlets, it should pop right up, should pop right up. Well, Lori, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure having you on today. Thank you. I appreciate the invitation. It's been fun. All right. Thanks so much. We'll talk soon. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.